somebody is attached to corporate success to the extent they ignore family life somebody is attached to the wife or the husband corporate success is insignificant somebody is attached to games for somebody it's money 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 all day long everybody is attached to different things what is the cause of attachment the cause of attachment really is very simple when we repeatedly contemplate that there is happiness somewhere when we repeatedly think there is happiness here there is happiness here this repeated contemplation of happiness in any object or person leads to attachment after all how did a person get attached to cigarettes if the person thinks about it when he or she went to college and experienced the new found freedom he saw my class fellow has got the cigarette dangling in his hand and he is creating these smoke rings his personality is appearing very impressive if i do the same i will also be impressive in other words he contemplated happiness in that pipe which creates smoke such a ridiculous thing but he contemplated happiness there and he tried it out but it was a terrible experience he coughed his eyes watered it was foul smelling but then he kept repeating this thought no there is happiness there my friends get it i will also get it that repeated contemplation is what created the attachment first it was one a day hiding under the staircase and the restroom from the parents and then after that two a day then three a day then it formed the link one is over he wants the other that is over he wants the next now he has got attached this was created by his own repeated contemplation somebody contemplated happiness in tea you know when i tell people that why do you take tea it's not beneficial for health the chemicals in it are not conducive for good health why do you take it they say swami ji if i don't take tea my head will feel dizzy tell me when nobody was drinking tea in this world was everybody feeling dizzy there was a time when tea was drunk only in england however when they rule the world they pass on the habit to others i hear from my parents that in india people were given tea free of charge and later on when they started getting addicted they were charged one paise then it became two paise and now people buy that little cup of tea for 5 rupees from the railway station now they have got attached so that attachment which got created was by this process of repeated thinking repeated contemplation of there being happiness somewhere so the whole chain becomes clear if we repeatedly think there is happiness somewhere it will lead to attachment and from attachment will come desire from desire will come greed and anger why now do we repeatedly contemplate that there is happiness anywhere why does this contemplation take place 
That, the Vedas say, is our very nature. That is the nature of our being. We have been created from that infinite ocean of bliss. Our very nature is to seek bliss. As the little part is naturally drawn to the whole. That's the law of gravitation. The apple that fell on Newton's head, it was the earth pulling its little part. So in this case, the ocean of bliss is pulling us. It's tiny fragments to itself. And we, tiny fragments, are naturally experiencing this urge for bliss. That is an irrevocable aspect of our personality. That nobody can cut. You practice spirituality for ages. You practice science and technology for ages. You go to any portion of this world. You will never be able to do away with this urge to experience bliss and happiness. So this urge for bliss is natural to us. That is why somewhere or the other, based on the environment we get, based upon our tendencies carrying over, we contemplate there is happiness here, there is happiness here. And once we have done that contemplation, the whole chain is now irrevocable. It will lead to attachment, which will lead to desire, which will lead to anger and greed. So when this urge for happiness is intrinsic to our being, how then? Do we tackle this process and utilize it for our benefit? Once we have understood the sequence, it can be put to our use. Now, without understanding the sequence, people endeavor. Give up anger. Give up anger. How do I do it? Is it some kind of a garland that I take it off and put it? I've given it up. Tell me how to give it up. You know, William James, he created a formula. He said there are two things. One is desire and one is the objects you have. If desire is a lot, the objects are less, you will be unhappy. If the objects are plenty, desire is less, you will be happy. So he said, reduce desire. But please tell me how to reduce desire. There was once a centipede that developed arthritis. Now imagine, a human being with arthritis, how painful it is, and a centipede with 100 legs having arthritis. So an owl was passing by. The owl looked at the centipede and said, you know, I am feeling pity on your condition. Can I make a suggestion? The centipede said, go ahead. If you could become a swan, your miseries would reduce to just 2% of the present. The centipede said, that is a brilliant suggestion. Ha, I never thought of it till today. So, Mr. Owl, can you tell me how can I become a swan? The owl said, I don't know, I only make policy decisions. So, similarly, it's all very well to say, give up anger and give up desire. How do you do it? Now, one spiritual technologist who is the most prolific writer in the Vedic tradition, the great sage Ved Vyas, he has put this whole technique of inner transformation into one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
ही सेज विषयान ध्याय तश्चित्तम विषयेशु विषज्जते मामनुस्मर तश्चित्तम मैये व प्रविलियते ही सेज इट इस सो सिंपल यू रिपीटेडली थॉट देर इस हैप्पीनेस इन दिस ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ़ द सेंसेस इन वर्ल्डली थिंग्स you developed attachment for them now you repeatedly think there is happiness in the place where you wish to channelize your desire ved vyas of course is referring to god himself he says repeatedly contemplate there is happiness in god and when you do that again and again it will lead to attachment in god just like it led to attachment in these mundane things and when you develop attachment for god it will lead to desire for god or if you have developed attachment for knowledge your intellect has repeatedly contemplated that knowledge is the highest thing service to society is the highest thing and you contemplated over this sufficiently you convinced your intellect about this that will lead to attachment in these sublime things and that attachment will lead to these higher desires and those higher desires will not downgrade you they will uplift you so to desire is not wrong to desire the right thing is the secret these great sages world over they are respected as great prophets great sages and saints what was common to all of them an intense desire for the sublime for the supreme for divine love for divine knowledge for detachment from mundane things the faculty of desire was millions of times greater developed than an us but they had channelized it in the right manner so in this technological system you decide focus analyze what is it that you cherish in life that you wish to become that you hold in high esteem in your intellectual value system and then contemplate sufficiently over it that contemplation will result naturally in everything else when you develop the intense desire स यमो तत्क्रतुर्भवती यतुर्भवती तत्कर्म कुरुते यत्कर्म कुरुते तदपी निष्पद्यते द वेदास गिव दिस फॉर्मुला फॉर मोटिवेशन दे से वेन यू हैव एन इंटेंस डिजायर यू विल मेक अ डिटर्मिन रिजॉल्व वेन यू हैव अ डिटर्मिन रिजॉल्व यू विल पुट इन इंटेंस एफर्ट and when you put in intense effort that is how you will become now the problem is without understanding the system we allowed our intellect to wander away we allowed our intellect to do its work in an unguided manner and if we can understand this we can guide the intellect and through the intellect guide the mind 